technique we're about to look at involves knives. Any situation involving knives is potentially life-threatening. And what you must understand is any decision you make to defend against the knife must be taken uh, with a view that you have no other choice, no other option. So if somebody is threatening with you with a knife, you must try and comply as much as possible. So give them whatever they're asking for, jewellery, bank cards, credit cards, cash or whatever. If there is no other choice, you have no other option, that should be really the final, your, your final decision to make a, a physical school. It's very important to understand that. The technique we're working on now is relatively advanced in craft and regard. So really attempts at this should only be made after a con consistently training over, over a number of years, uh, whereby you've developed your, your, your stamina, your speed, your flexibility, your fitness, and ultimately your ability to make a decision, a good decision, a quick decision, in a fast moving situation where your level of stress and adrenaline is relatively high. Um, we're going to work today with an aluminium knife, it is not sharp. Um, but early stages of any training should be made with rubber knives. Um, again, just, just, just for safety, up to aluminium and then, and then maybe other types of knives as you get to a certain level of training. So today we use aluminium um, because of, of the context of what we're doing this. So the problem we're going to deal with, if I can just use um, Dave, the problem we're going to deal with is, an, is, is a very close range knife threat to the neck. Okay, so the problems associated with that, of course, are cutting towards your um, carotid arteries, which I'm sure you'll understand is not a particularly good thing. So the idea is that the knife is against the throat. There are many other ways in which the knife may be held against the body, but we're going to concentrate on that one. So a right-handed attacker, predominantly right-handed people, I guess more than left, towards the throat. This is the problem, relatively close, and, and we're going to use a wall. So again, we look, we look, look at more restriction, more confined space. Again, I'll reiterate, advanced technique, you need to know what you're doing. You need to have no other choice in which to do that. So how do we deal with the problem? <coughs> we deal with the problem in, in, in this manner. <coughs> okay. Once again. Give us your money. Give us your money. <coughs> so the idea, the knife is against my throat. And traditionally when this happens, a lot of people do this. This only comes from one place, which is the movies and doesn't really help us too much. When I raise my hands above or towards his eye line, you can see exactly what my hands are doing. So I'm going to keep my hands low. I may be checking my pockets to say I'm trying to find something to give him or whatever, but ultimately he can't really see what my hands are doing because of the eye line between him, the knife, and my hands. And also <coughs> the fact that he's concentrating on the upper part of my body, so not really the lower part. What I'm looking to do is to send my hand in a C motion, C gripping motion, towards the wrist that the knife is held. So sending my hand the shortest possible way, sending the knife away from me, me away from the knife, with the gap that I create here, and, and lifting my hand up to make a strike. One point I'll make is, anytime you grip a hand with a knife, you grip it like a roller coaster. Anytime you grip, you grip as strong as possible. This hand coming up, and again, as we did yesterday, strong counter attack towards the face, vulnerable part of the body on the jawline, in order to change his thought process to pain, getting to think about something else. So strong attacking towards the face. What I'll then do is I'll make what I call double control. So I'll put two hands, one on the wrist, and one I'm going to wrap his knuckles. It stops him changing hands with the knife, it stops him doing something else with the knife. From there, forcing the knife away from me, I know where the knife is, it's the length of my arm, not holding the knife close. From there, where possible, another strong counter attack towards the groin. We've hit high, his attention is now high, hit low. Maybe the knee, maybe the leg, again, depending on the heels and footwear, etc. Good strong attack, which may send to the floor, and light will make him drop the knife. Okay, again, from the stress point of view, but we're looking to leave the situation as quick as possible. Are you good with that? Cool, let's do it nice and slow to start with. 